This was Meg Miles, not a Marilyn, not a Hepburn, yet her talent promised a legacy just as enduring. So why, decades later, do the whispers of her name evoke a sense of mystery, a hint of what could have been? Why is the story of Meg Miles, a siren of the silver screen, not told alongside the greats of old Hollywood? What keeps the enigma of Meg Miles alive in the hearts of classic film aficionados? And what lessons does her story hold for the Hollywood we know today? The Silver Screen's Hidden Gem in the tapestry of Hollywood's golden age, many stars have their names emblazoned in history, but some, like Meg Miles, remain etched faintly, awaiting rediscovery. Born on November 14, 1934, Miles entered an era of film that would witness the rise of Technicolor and the heyday of noir, yet her introduction to the screen was as modest as her small-town roots. Meg Miles' journey into the world of glitz and glamour began in the 1950s. It was a decade marked by the Cold War and the sound of rock and roll, yet for Miles, it was the era of auditions, bit parts, and the relentless pursuit of a break that would make her a household name. Her early roles were often uncredited, but her determination was as palpable as the characters she played. By the 1960s, Miles had carved a niche for herself with her talents showcased in films like Coogan's Bluff in 1968, a crime thriller that starred Clint Eastwood and saw Miles in a supporting role that highlighted her versatility and charisma. It was during this period that her star seemed poised to rise, catching the attention of audiences and critics alike. Yet, despite her growing filmography, the leading roles remained elusive. Meg Miles's performances, while riveting, were often overshadowed by the era's leading ladies, Marilyn Monroe captivated with her blonde bombshell appeal, Audrey Hepburn enchanted with her elegant poise, and Elizabeth Taylor dazzled with her violet eyes and dramatic flair. Miles, with her distinctive look and evident talent, had all the makings of joining these ranks, but the spotlight shifted only fleetingly in her direction. The year 1971 brought Miles to a broader audience with The Anderson Tapes, where she starred alongside Sean Connery. The film, a heist thriller directed by Sidney Lumet, showcased Miles' ability to hold her own against some of the era's cinematic titans. Her performance was both nuanced and bold, yet it would become a mere footnote in an era rich with cinematic achievements. As the decades passed, the question lingered. Why did Hollywood's embrace of Meg Miles tighten and then relax before her talents could be fully recognized? She had the presence, the skill, and the tenacity that defined many of her contemporaries. Her name appeared on marquees, her performances ranged from the comedically light to the dramatically intense, yet the roles that would solidify her stardom remained just out of reach. Meg Miles' career, while not headlining every tabloid or marquee, was nonetheless significant. She navigated the cutthroat Hollywood landscape with a grace that belied the challenges of the time, times defined by a transition from the stoic post-war sensibilities to the free-spirited zest of the 60s. Miles was there, through it all, her performances capturing the shifts in American culture and cinema. Beyond the Spotlight, Meg's Mastery while Meg Miles may not have become a marquee name, her mastery of the craft was evident to those who worked with her and those select few who became her ardent fans. In a career that spanned over a decade, Miles displayed a versatility that allowed her to slip into various characters with ease and depth. Despite the lack of leading roles, her performances in films such as Satan in High Heels 1962 showcased her ability to command a scene. In this film, she played a manipulative nightclub singer, a role that demanded a balance of sensuality and strength, which she delivered with a captivating presence. It's a performance that stands out for its fearlessness at a time when Hollywood was just beginning to push the boundaries of its conservative leanings. Her contemporaries, stars like Jane Mansfield and Mamie Van Doren, were celebrated for their bombshell personas, yet Miles brought a different kind of allure to the screen. 
She had the looks that could have easily landed her similar roles, but she sought out characters that offered more complexity, roles that required an emotional resonance which she delivered time and again. The year 1964 marked a significant turn in her career with her role in Touched, a film that explored mental illness, a subject rarely touched upon in that era with any serious depth. Her portrayal was poignant, thoughtful, and far ahead of its time, reflecting a social awareness that her more famous peers seldom had the opportunity to express. A comparison to the likes of Kim Novak is inevitable. Novak, known for her role in Vertigo, was one of the defining actresses of the era, celebrated for her icy demeanor and vulnerability. Miles had a similar on-screen magnetism, but was never given a stage as grand as Novak's to showcase it. It wasn't just her acting that made Miles stand out. Her personal life, too, was marked by the kind of independence that defined the coming age in Hollywood. She was a woman who navigated a male-dominated industry with tenacity, not allowing herself to be typecast or sidelined. This strength off-screen translated into her roles, giving her performances an authenticity that her audience, though small, deeply appreciated. Moreover, Miles' career was marked by a consistency that many of her peers struggled to maintain. She worked steadily through the years, a testament to her professionalism and dedication to her craft. Her work ethic was reminiscent of actresses like Bette Davis, who was known for her determination and unwillingness to compromise her standards for the roles she chose. The lingering question remains, what might have been if Meg Miles had been given opportunities equal to her talent? Her roles in Counterplot, 1959, and Run Across the River, 1961, offered glimpses of a star potential that remained largely unfulfilled. Her ability to imbue even the smallest part with depth and realism was a skill that deserved greater recognition. As we reflect on Meg Miles' career, it is clear that her acting prowess was undeniable. The characters she brought to life may not have always been at the center of the plot, but her performances were invariably memorable, leaving an indelible mark on those who witnessed them. You know what else leaves a strong mark? You subscribing to our channel. It costs a second and helps us create more content for you to enjoy. The Whispered Controversies Meg Miles' career was not without its share of whispered controversies and rumors that simmered below the surface, much like the characters she portrayed. While not as scandal-plagued as some stars, the murmurs surrounding Miles fed the enigmatic aura that would come to define her legacy. One persistent rumor that followed Miles was her supposed connections with the era's leading men. Her beauty and talent led to speculation about off-screen romances a common narrative spun by studio publicity machines that could make or break a career. The truth of these matters was often obscured by the studio's desire to craft a saleable image, leaving the public to wonder about the real stories behind the tabloid headlines. Another less-known controversy was Miles' outspoken nature in an industry that often demanded silence from its stars, especially women. She was rumored to have turned down roles that she felt were demeaning or typecasting, a move that was bold for its time and potentially detrimental to her career. This defiance against the norm was echoed in the roles she chose, from strong-willed women to complex, unconventional characters that challenged the submissive stereotypes of the time. The competition for roles among actresses was fierce, and rumors abounded that Miles' forthrightness might have led to her being quietly blacklisted from certain projects. This speculation was fueled by her sudden and unexplained absence from major film roles during what could have been the peak of her career, leading some to believe that there was more to the story than met the public eye. In an era where image was everything, Miles' refusal to conform to the expected Hollywood persona could have been a double-edged sword. It earned her respect among her peers, but might have cost her the stardom that her talent warranted. The industry was changing, but not quickly enough for women who dared to step outside the lines drawn by studio executives. These rumors and controversies, though never dominating the headlines like the exploits of more notorious stars, 
nonetheless contributed to the mystique that surrounded Miles. They painted a picture of an actress who was perhaps ahead of her time, one who might have flourished in a later era of film where the outspokenness and independence she exhibited were more widely embraced. Meg Miles' story is reminiscent of other actresses of the time who faced similar challenges. The likes of Veronica Lake and Hedy Lamarr come to mind, both of whom battled the studio system in their own ways, with their careers suffering as a result. Miles, like them, appears to have been caught in the crossfire of a changing industry and the rigid expectations of a starlet. The true extent of these controversies may never be fully known, but they add a layer of depth to the enigma that is Meg Miles. Her talent was undeniable, but the path to enduring fame is often about more than just talent. It's a path littered with the casualties of rumor and speculation, a path that Meg Miles walked with dignity and poise. Shadows and Light, Miles' Influence Meg Miles may not be a name that instantly recalls a litany of blockbuster titles or Oscar nominations, yet her influence in the industry during her active years and the subtle but indelible mark she left merits recognition. It's the early 1960s, Hollywood is in the throes of the studio system's decline and the rise of new Hollywood is on the horizon. In this transformative period, Meg Miles stood as a figure of both continuity and change. Her performances in films like Satan in High Heels became a testament to her ability to navigate the evolving landscape of female roles in cinema. In this chapter of Hollywood's history, Miles' influence is not marked by the kind of seismic shifts instigated by some of her peers, but rather by the quiet persistence of her craft. She wasn't the star causing ripples with public scandals or groundbreaking performances, but her steady work ethic and her nuanced portrayals provided a blueprint for the emerging breed of actresses who sought to be recognized for their acting prowess rather than their tabloid value. Miles's approach to her roles demonstrated a commitment to depth and complexity at a time when women were often relegated to one-dimensional characters. While the likes of Marilyn Monroe and Elizabeth Taylor were seizing headlines, Miles was diligently honing her craft, possibly influencing her fellow performers to seek out roles that challenged both the actress and the audience. Though there may be few direct testimonials or quotes from film historians that specifically cite Miles' influence, the environment she contributed to helped pave the way for more nuanced female roles and the actresses who would inhabit them. Her professional journey is a microcosm of the experiences of many women in Hollywood during that era, facing the pressures of typecasting, battling for substantial roles, and navigating an industry that was often less than welcoming to the ambitions of a serious actress. Romance in the Limelight, Meg Miles' Hidden Love Life the love life of Meg Miles, much like her career, was a blend of public perception and private reality. A delicate dance in the limelight that offered only fleeting glimpses into her personal world. While Miles' on-screen performances were subject to the gaze of audiences worldwide, her romantic relationships remained largely shielded from the public eye. In an industry where romantic liaisons often became as much a part of an actor's brand as their performances, Miles maintained a distinct separation between her personal affairs and her professional life. This discretion was a notable departure from the Hollywood norm, where studio-managed relationships and highly publicized marriages were the order of the day. Yet, within the inner circles of Hollywood's elite, Miles's love life was not without its own stories. It was an era when leading men and women were paired both on screen and off, and rumors of flings and affairs were as common as the films themselves. For Meg Miles, the whispers were there, but she managed to keep the details of her romantic life out of the press, a testament to her desire for privacy in a world that thrived on exposure. The few relationships that did surface in the tabloids were often laced with speculation, ties to co-stars, connections with influential figures in the industry, and the occasional mention of a mystery suitor, all of which added to the enigma of Miles. Yet none of these rumored romances ever solidified into the kind of public courtship that defined the love lives of some of her contemporaries. 
While other stars of the era, such as Elizabeth Taylor and Debbie Reynolds, saw their love lives become almost as famous as their film roles, Miles' approach was markedly different. She was not seen on the arm of industry moguls at premieres, nor did she make hedlines with tumultuous breakups or whirlwind romances. This discretion likely contributed to her being underrated, as she did not engage in the personal publicity that often propelled actors to stardom. Despite this, it is known that Miles married twice. Her first marriage was to actor John Michaels, which, like many Hollywood marriages, ended in divorce. Her second marriage was to radio and television personality Sid Noel, known for his alter ego as the horror host Morgus the Magnificent. This marriage, while it lasted, remained a private affair with little to no details finding their way into the public domain. The lack of sensationalism in Miles's love life speaks volumes about her priorities. It suggests an individual who sought to cultivate her relationships away from the cameras, valuing the sanctity of her personal experiences over potential publicity. This choice, while perhaps costing her some measure of fame, allowed her to navigate her personal journey on her own terms. In an era defined by the merging of personal and public personas, Meg Miles's decision to keep her love life out of the spotlight is a poignant reflection of her character. It is a choice that speaks to a deeper understanding of the fleeting nature of Hollywood romance and the enduring value of private life amid public spectacle. Meg Miles's Twilight Years as the golden hues of Hollywood's heyday began to dim, so too did the frequency of Meg Miles' appearances on the silver screen. Her last known film role was in the 1971 Sidney Lumet-directed The Anderson Tapes, where she starred opposite Sean Connery. This film, a heist narrative set in New York City, allowed Miles to once again exhibit her range and depth as an actress. However, following this performance, her presence in the cinematic world became more sporadic. The reasons behind Miles' retreat from Hollywood are as nuanced as her career. By the 1970s, the film industry was undergoing seismic shifts. New Hollywood was in full swing and the types of roles and stories being told were changing. It was a period marked by the emergence of director-driven films and a new generation of actors. For Miles, whose career had been built during the studio system's zenith, this represented both a challenge and an opportunity to reassess her path. What is known about her post-Hollywood career is that Miles did not vanish into obscurity, but rather chose to step away from the limelight. She turned her attention to personal interests, and in many ways began to craft a life that was as rich off-screen as it had been on it. She embraced a more private existence, one that allowed her to enjoy the fruits of her work without the constant glare of the public eye. Miles' last public appearances are a testament to the affection and respect she garnered throughout her career. She was often seen at film festivals and classic Hollywood events, where she was celebrated not just for her work but for her contributions to an era of film that continues to captivate audiences. The final years of Meg Miles' life remained largely out of the public eye, with only occasional glimpses into her world through interviews or retrospectives that highlighted her earlier work. These rare insights painted a picture of a woman content with her life choices, one who looked back at her career with a mixture of pride and wistfulness. Her legacy, while not encapsulated by a prolific output or a storied personal life splashed across the headlines, is preserved in the celluloid frames of her films and the memories of those who worked with her. In the twilight of her career and life, Miles' impact remained etched in the minds of cinema enthusiasts who recognized her contributions to the art form. The allure of Meg Miles' story lies not just in the roles she played, but in the grace with which she transitioned from a public figure to a private individual, ensuring that her final act was on her own terms. Her departure from the industry was not marked by scandal or tragedy, but by a quiet dignity that many of her peers found elusive. In exploring the last years of Meg Miles' life, we find a narrative that contrasts sharply with the tumult often associated with Hollywood endings. 
It is a story that adds yet another layer to the complex tapestry of her life, one that speaks to the personal victories away from the cameras and the enduring allure of an actress who left the stage with the same elegance with which she entered it. A star's signature role, Satan in High Heels and Legacy. Meg Miles' career is a mix of varied roles and performances, but it is her lead role in the 1962 film Satan in High Heels that stands out as her signature work. In this film, she played Stacy Kane, a cunning and ambitious nightclub singer who manipulates men to climb the social ladder. Her portrayal of Kane was both powerful and provocative, earning her acclaim for her commanding screen presence and complex character work. Satan in High Heels became a cult classic, not just for its daring plot and stylish execution, but also for Miles' unforgettable performance. The film, with its themes of seduction, power, and ambition, became emblematic of a time when Hollywood was beginning to push the boundaries of its own storytelling norms. Miles' role as Stacey Kane became a symbol of a woman taking control of her destiny, an image that resonated with the evolving sensibilities of the early 60s audience. This role captured the essence of Miles' talent, her ability to bring depth to a character that could easily have been a one-dimensional femme fatale. It showcased her range and her willingness to take on challenging parts that offered something more than the traditional roles allotted to women at the time. Satan in high heels stood as a testament to her skill and became the centerpiece of her cinematic legacy. As Miles stepped away from the spotlight and her public appearances became less frequent, the appreciation for her work in Satan in High Heels only grew. The film's enduring popularity ensured that Miles would be remembered and celebrated in the annals of cult cinema. It served as a beacon for her fans and a reminder of her prowess as an actress capable of capturing the complexities of the human spirit. The Enduring Allure of Meg Miles in the annals of Hollywood history, Meg Miles' name may not be as widely recognized as some of her contemporaries, but her legacy is no less significant. Through her dedication to her craft and her ability to leave a lasting impression even in less prominent roles, she carved out a place for herself in the collective memory of classic film aficionados. Miles' journey through Hollywood was marked by the poise and dignity with which she approached her career. Satan, in high heels, remains her most celebrated performance, a film that continues to garner admiration for its bold narrative and Miles' powerful portrayal of a woman ahead of her time. The legacy of Meg Miles is one of quiet impact. She may not have been the brightest star in Hollywood's firmament, but her light continues to shine for those who appreciate the subtleties of her performances and the strength of her presence. In the shifting sands of fame, Miles' work stands as a monument to an actress who was as much a pioneer as she was a performer, whose contributions to the art of cinema are worthy of recognition and remembrance. <laughs> if you enjoyed the video, check out the next one in this series.